lovely people, it's Cara here and I am so, so mad. It's actually been a few weeks since I've been, been doing some filming. Um, I'm in the middle of house moving and I've been decided to do some batch filming um, when I can, then do some more packing and then do some more filming. Um, and a couple of things have happened. Autumn definitely is... Um, found itself in a big hurry and you know it made me reflect on um, this whole filming you know and vlog making and things because the weather isn't great today the lighting isn't great today and I thought to myself oh how did I do this last year and I'm like I wasn't doing it last year I only started this wonderful experience in April can hardly believe what I've achieved in that time I absolutely love doing this um, and so I'm like wandering around the house thinking where can I film if I can't film if it's raining so in some of the footage you'll see today it's actually um, very very blustery and I know a number of my fellow um, vloggers have had experiences where their cameras have crashed onto the table and cracked their lenses and all sorts of things and I am literally if I'm looking nervous in some of the footage today it's because my my little tripod is like in the wind so um so thank you for being here if you've been here from the beginning and welcome if you're new I've had a lot, lot of lovely new subscribers recently and thank you for all the lovely feedback about my Zadie jumpsuit um, and other bits and pieces that I um, I've been filming about recently so I really appreciate that and I thought I would just take the opportunity to squeeze a couple more videos in so today I'm focusing on what I've sewed, um, sewed in October um, I've got uh, four things I think to show you today and then almost straight after this one I'm going to film another um, film that will go out in a couple of weeks time and that will be a fabric haul and then that's it I cannot sew anymore until I've moved now we still haven't exchanged um, but I'm optimistic as ever that will move um, on the oh, mid mid November at least and that is only a couple of weeks away um, so by the time you watch this there's every chance I'll be in my new house oh! um, so I do absolutely just have to stop planning sewing I just need to pack up the lot um, and uh, and move so let me crack on um, so I'll start with what I'm wearing today. Now this is a Lakala pattern. Um, I think I've filmed some footage so I will put some in here. Yeah, it's one of the things I filmed this morning. I've just come back from Ikea actually so my hair looks a bit... Um, not that my hair is bad because I've been to Ikea but the weather is... <laughs> The weather is blustery, so it's gone a bit sort of curly and bouffant. Anyway, so this is a Lakala um, pattern. Now the colour, as I might have I've mentioned before, and I'll put a card up here to a previous film I did, um, talking a little bit more about the colour patterns. Um, they're a Russian-based company um, and they're translated into English. Uh, the instructions are always really scant um, and this um, this top was no exception. Exception. This is a crossover top, you can't really see that here, but you, know, you can see if I because um, it's in black. There's a crossover here it's a faux crossover because actually it's an empire line which i'll show you um in, in a bit more detail in a second um and i made it in this black jersey um from uh, uh fabric uh, fc fc studio this was from um it's a interesting um jersey to work with not it's not too thick not too thin so just about right um for a um for a, a jersey top which is great um, it's called blouse 8000 um, if you're looking for it on their website I thought it was called a crossover top or something which I think is what I might have called it in the past I'll put the stock photo up here so you can see it um, and it's it's a really interesting so the Lakala patterns this one in particular is very very basic so um, it actually um, is just a neck band uh, sorry a uh, a neck edge that you would fold over twice and, and zigzag down or, um, or top stitch down. Um, the, I don't know if you can see there in the light, the, this is the empire part here. So imagine you've got the two crossover bits at the top, then you've got a section of fabric at the bottom and then the, the back is in one piece and obviously the sleeves are, um, you can have the sleeves in any length you wanted, but I'm, I went for a full length, so I, although I tend to, as you'll see, I tend to do that to my sleeves anyway. And this, it came together really quickly because it is ever so, ever so easy. Um, literally, uh, crossover, 
um, you've got two little pleats here just under the bust area um, so you do those first and then you put the shoulder seams together um, uh, and then put the bottom panel on or just a slight the other way around very very straightforward construction and the t-shirt itself came together really well and I really liked it now I had chosen to use a stay tape, or sorry, like a, a fusible interfacing tape when I've done the fold. Um, and I have to say it came out really low. Now I liked it, um, if, I was, if I was a braver and slightly less busty woman, then I think it would look really cool. I'm gonna come right into the camera here, and I hope you can see this. Um, so you can see where my finger here is, this is the original hemline. Um, just there um, and actually I loved it I, I really liked it as a finish but it was too low cut for me and I didn't want to just um, throw it to experience or to the the scrap pile so I actually went back in and eyeballed a neckband so this is the so that's and say that's the original edge there and then I just created a very simple, um, just measured the measured the circumference of the of the neck itself. I think I did ninety percent, uh, maybe or eighty or ninety percent of the total circumference. I unpicked this section so that the the neck was exposed, and then just sewed it sewed it on. And I thought, do you know what? I've got two chances. Um, either it's going to work or it isn't. Um, but it, I'm really pleased with the result actually. Um, as a result, it, it, it's got a slight pucker here. Um, I'm going to call that a design feature. It does slightly pucker, but it's not unpleasant. It's fairly even um, and it's a really, really wearable top. It, uh, I think in truth, it's not pay, made for people of my chesticle size because actually the, the empire is coming probably to the apex of my boobies so it probably should sit under my boobies it doesn't gravity pays its part there am i bothered do other people know about that um could i say it's the design um of the t-shirt why not so so it's a big tick tick from me i really like it and i've worn it a lot and i don't actually have very many v-neck t-shirts and i think um and ladies of a certain size chest uh, an exposed area here is very flattering um so yeah there you go that is make number one um and i'm really pleased with it um if i had if i make it again which i, I probably will or definitely will i'll know not to I'll know to add a neck band because actually I finished this inner seam, if you like, with the stay tape. So on the inside, it's it's quite bulky. It's not bulky because it's just jersey, but it doesn't sit as flat on the inside as it would if I hadn't done that that piece of finishing, if you like. So yeah, it's um I'll pop some footage in here somewhere um of me wandering around, and in that footage I'll show you a make that I made last year. I'm just gonna take a sip of tea, a sec. Oh, there's one thing about Ikea and it's how thirsty I get. Um, it's just the atmosphere in there or something. I'm not least the fact they're in there for such a long time. Mm. It's half term this week so I thought it'd be really really busy um, but it actually wasn't too bad. Anyway so in the footage I'm actually um, wearing something that I made last year and you know, I, um, I like to sort of repurpose fabric when I can. So I've made um, two jeans jackets out of um, old pairs of jeans. So it turns out jackets are my thing to recycle with. And I made this, um, you can see it in the footage anyway, but I'll pop it on. Up and down, up and down, like a jack in box, jack in the box I am. So I made this, which is the Seamwork Chip Jacket. Um, odd name for a jacket, I think. Um, but it's a really traditional sort of biker, biker jacket. Um, and I made this out of a poncho, massive great big poncho thing that I bought in um, Primark for no money whatsoever. It's a really thick... Um, uh, What's this? It's like, a, it's like a blanket basically, really thick fabric and this lovely tartan check and I had two of them and they were sort of reversible so one side was plain black and the other side was this um, so I, when I lined it I made the lining because I knew that that would sit, it does go all the way up um, so it's really toasty and warm 
but obviously it's designed to be worn with that open out like that. So there you go, there's an extra thing I've not shown you before. I don't think I showed, maybe this made an appearance right at the beginning of my um, YouTubing, but I don't think so. Um, so yeah, I did little inseam pockets there. I think, I think the inseam pockets are part of it. Um, it part of the pattern, but yeah. So um, and it's I'm, this is my favourite time of year for for clothes because I do like to be snugly and warm. Um, and this genuinely, it was a blanket before, and it's now a blanket in the form of a really rather nice little um, jacket. I sort of it was it's um, abstract in its pattern anyway. Um, so yeah. There we go, so it's my first two makes. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop on um, pop on the next make um, so it's slightly easier for you to see it back in a sec. Okay, so here I am in the next make, and this fabric, just before I explain the make, um, this fabric is part of the um, fabric haul that I got from, um, completely gone out of my head, from itokery um in india and it's oh, this cotton i wish this was i wish you could feel this through the camera because it is amazing i've not felt like a cotton like it it's actually very very close to being a double gauze it is a single um well maybe it isn't a single it, it's was sold as a single cotton but it's just so soft um, and it's a really lovely colour. Um, uh, again, I've put some footage in um, to show you. But it's um, this is uh, from La Makerist, um, and this is from the La Makerist France, which is makerist.fr. Um, as I explained in one of my previous videos, they were holding a sale, um, a two euro sale for patterns. And this really caught my eye because I just wanted a simple um, squirrel, squirrel bouncing around outside. I just wanted a, sing a simple shape um, sort of blouse at the top. It actually comes with um, sort of elbow length uh, sleeves and I lengthened those and then just popped on some um, some elasticated cuffs. Um, I literally folded over the folded over the edge and popped um, some elastic in. But the back detail is really sweet. I hope you can see that. Um, a lovely pleat detail at the back here. Um, and I think that just elevates it from just a plain, um, simple blouse to, oh, blouse stroke top, I suppose, to something um, a little bit more unique. Um, and it's, uh, it is really snuggly. Um, I've not really thought that cotton would be warm, but this is very soft. Um, it was a lovely make, actually, um, slightly different in its construction, in that um, it's got a yoke that isn't... You know, until you're in the buttons, the yoke would be the shape of the neckline itself. With this top, the yoke is actually straight across. Um, and from memory, I actually, you end up securing it in with the, um, so it's not secure, not secure here, um, but it's secured through the shoulder seams. I, I believe that's what's happened there. And then the, the yoke on the back, um, as you can see, there's a seam here. Um, and then there's another yoke that sits under there. So it's the same concept for a facing, but just a slightly different shape on the inside. And it did take a bit of head scratching and a lot of work with Google Translate to work this out, because um, it was all in French, obviously, it being um, the French website. Um, so I had to go back and forth between the two windows. Luckily, I've got um, Google Chrome um, as, as my browser and it will automatically detect a different language and tra translate, which is which is what happened here. Um, but like La Cala, the makerist, in my experience, has quite um, quite ba well, very very basic instructions, and you would definitely need to know what uh, how a, how a blouse like this would would come together in order to make that work um so yeah but it's i haven't really got anything more to say about it really absolutely love the fabric really love the style of it i love the openness of this um i think this would be really a great piece for all year round actually i might wear a little vest underneath because it is open to the element uh, well it's not open to the elements at all um but it's obviously a little wider here and then i i created a um, a sort of little uh, high-low hem here. Um, I'm not sure that was on the pattern, but um, 
Let's sit back down. So I hope you guys aren't seasick with me getting up and down, up and down. Um, sometimes when I cut out a pattern, the back is longer than the front. Um, I don't know why that happens exactly, but I chose to embrace that um, and sort of incorporate that in, in the hemline there. Um, the toaster sweater has a similar thing, I think, from memory. And so I knew I knew that it would it would work out okay. Um, so yeah, that's that's make number two. Um, and again, I'm wearing it with jeans, um, just really straightforward thing to, um, to wear and to, yeah, I think you could, um, I think you could make this look smart or casual depending on what you were wearing it with. So, um, let's move on to my next make. The next thing I want to share with you is my first ever make for Minerva. Um, I... I applied to be one of their bloggers um, and was chosen, um, so I was, yeah, felt really honoured by that. Um, and they send me, I think there are different ways of being a Minerva blogger, and in my experience they send me a list of fabrics um, that they would like people to um, work with. And then you can choose that fabric, um, you don't have to tell them what you're going to make or anything, um, and then um, I saw this Lady McElroy uh, 11 and a half ounce denim, or 11 ounce denim, sorry. Um, I love Lady McElroy fabrics, um, Lady McElroy, McElroy um, fabrics, and this denim is no exception. Now you've seen, um, I was asking advice actually in one of my previous videos on um, how to look after this fabric because when it arrived the denim was really stiff and I was really concerned about it um, but and I read up you know about the, the I think it's white wine vinegar you can do something with coke maybe not at the same time um, to soften the denim um, all sorts of different advice and I thought do you know what I'm gonna start by just washing it and see how I go and I needn't have worried because it came out beautifully soft now, the other thing I've been warned about or read about and, and seen fellow vloggers talk about is denim creasing. Um, it is part of its natural characteristic. And this denim, this denim was no exception. Um, and I don't know if you can see that, if I bring it up. Um, I don't know if you can see, the light's not brilliant actually. But there are, um, it is slightly creased because I've worn it, I've worn it to work, but um, there are just natural creases in the actual colour of this denim. Um, so I was quite conscious of that when I, when I cut it out. Um, I don't know if you can see those or not. I think I took some pictures of it, so I, I will include those. Um, but this, did I tell you what this was? I'm so sorry. This is the Olive Pinafore um, by Tilly and the Buttons. I'm going to sneeze at some stage. No, I think I'm all right. All right, <coughs> excuse me. Um, uh, this is the olive uh, olive pinafore. Um, now, actually, coincidentally, one of my good um, sewing friends, Michelle from Sewing Bunny, has just done a sew along for the for the olive um, pinafore. So I'll link to that below. But it's um, it's a lovely, lovely sew along. So lots more details to be found from her. But yeah, it, this is um, you go. It's the olive olive pinafore from the Tilly, Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book. I love a Tilly and the Buttons pattern, and this was one of the few things I hadn't made. And um, when I saw that there was a, a, um, a denim on the list that I could make from, I was like, oh, I absolutely would love to make a pinafore. I love nothing more at this time of year to be wearing a dress with a, um, a top underneath, maybe a polo neck and boots and tights. Um, and that's certainly the picture that I'll put in here for you. Um, that's the outfit I wore to work one day this week. Um, it's just such a sweet make. Um, it's, I've chose to use a leopard print lining here um, just for a bit of pop of, of difference. Nobody gets to see that, it's just me. So you can see it's all, um, so the, the facing here is all in a leopard print. Um, and there's a lot of firsts here for me because um, I've not really worked with a solid non-stretch denim before. Um, I hadn't used prim snaps before. Now I can't say we were overly friends at the end of it. Um, I think it would take a lot more practice for me to be able to get that 100% right. The placements and everything is good. But all I can say is thank goodness I had a few left over or a few extra for the mistakes that I made. But what a lovely thing to do, really simple. And I really like the finish that it gives. Um, 
you can see that there really like the finish um, and with with Tilly in the buttons pattern she's really keen to give you ideas as to how to make it your own and one of them was to add the patch pockets and so I chose to put pockets on the front here um, mostly so that I could put my work keys and my phone um, in, and have them about my person um, so it just makes my life a little bit easier so I'm super pleased with this um, it's yeah and actually I don't know if it's just because I got used to the used to the creasing of the fabric and things, but I don't really even notice them anymore. Um, maybe it's maybe it's even got better. But it does, yeah. It has got a certain finish to it, um, and I really like it. Um, and it goes really well with the burgundy top that I've got um, that's in the picture. But also, um, I've got some nice autumnal colours, and I'm going to make some polar necks out of um, in over the coming weeks. Well. Once I've moved, once I've settled, I must remember this, I remember this, <laughs> I am not going to be sewing for a period of time. In fact, I'm not going to be sewing for the longest period of time since I started sewing. <gasps> How will I cope? Anyway, so um, yeah, so that's that's the olive um, pinafore dress. Um, now I'm going to be uploading a, um, a blog um, to the Minerva Craft, I keep saying Minerva Craft, sorry, Minerva, the Minerva website. It's a bit like Closet Core, um, then all, now Closet Case, and Minerva changed their, um, their trading name a long time ago, probably a year ago, and I still keep saying the wrong thing, so apologies for that. So that's the olive pinafore. Um, what else have I got to show you? Let's have a look. Okay, so here's uh, the last but one make. Um, so I've, I've moved my chair back actually, so um, or forward or something, so the frame is a little bit different, sorry about that. Um, needs no introduction really. This is the indigo dress, um, in the buttons. Now I know loads of you, so I'm just... <laughs> stuff whilst I'm filming. Um, I know loads of you have made this and loads of you have made this edition um, as well. Um, I love the indigo and I've kind of forgotten just how much I like it actually. Um, really versatile this time of year, wearing it with boots and, and tights and things. Um, I'm going to put some footage of me um, wandering around in this um, whilst I tell you about the adaptations I made. Um, so I made really lovely big um, bishop sleeves. I really like this look that is on the high street. It's probably not that flattering whilst I'm sitting down because there's obviously a lot of fabric here. But um, yes, yeah, so a nice big bishop sleeves. And to do that, I put, um, and I'll set insert a picture here, but the standard till in the buttons um, sleeve down onto some, I used uh, baking paper. Um, and then um, I cut, uh, trace around that and then I slit it, uh, I was, sorry, wrote, draw, draw five lines, and then I cut um, almost up into the top, and this is what you get, this is a, you get an octopus. Uh, <laughs> now obviously it's got all curly, but um, you can see there the premise of what I've done. And basically you end up with the, the sleeves, um, my, it's a shame I'm not doing anything for Halloween. I might have been able to use that as a as a wig or something. But you end up with um, something that you can then spread spread the um, the, the sleeve um, just to, to to your desired um, effect. I eyeballed it completely. Never done anything like that before, um, and I've ended up with a really lovely full sleeve. Um, then to bring it back in again, I actually decided to um, create a cuff, uh, and again I completely eyeballed this. Um, you can see there if I come in a little bit closer. So I've created quite a deep cuff there. Um, and then I um, sewed a gathering stitch around the edge of the, the sleeve, um, and then um, yeah, attached the cuff. Uh, the cuff is very straightforward, it's quite a wide piece, of wide rectangle. Um, and then fold it back on itself um, so that it, you know, um, the right sides together and then you turn it through so that you end up with this nice fit, clean finish at the top of the cuff um, and the gathered, a gathered edge all around here. Um, you won't be able to see it but um, I actually also added um, a frill um, 
here and or it's a really deep frill actually that I've, I've added um because I wanted it to be full length um uh, I kept the pockets in absolutely essential and an indigo which I love um and hopefully you can see in the footage there that the full length of it it's very squishy I made it in this wonderful sort of hippie 1970s um, style um, fabric from the textile centre. This is uh, bubble crepe. Um, it's not got a particularly um, crepe feeling about it actually. But I really love the colours. It's really autumnal. It's super comfy to wear. Now I know a lot of people are adding in, adding in the tie, ties at the back. But actually I quite like the, the free flowing style of it. I think when I'm sitting down here it looks like quite a lot of quite a lot of fabric sitting there. And as you can see there, my telltale pulling up of the sleeves. Um, but yes, yeah, so it looks like looks quite heavy from, from where I'm sitting here, but it doesn't feel like that in, in, in person. But I'm super pleased with it. Actually, I did, my only regret is that I haven't really got anywhere to go to wear it, because um, none of us are going out particularly. Um, I'm going out for dinner tonight, so I might, I might wear it this evening. I do feel really swishy and, um, yeah, just chilled out um, in it. Um, and yeah, it's a great... I just love, I love the fact that we can have the creativity to do whatever we like with these designs, that we get by inspired by each other. Loads and loads of you have made very similar dresses to this one um, and each of you have inspired me in a different way to do that, which I'm hugely grateful for. Um, but yeah, it's great fun and I, actually it wasn't as... Um, Scary as I thought, I, I actually asked the Secret Life of the Secret Life of the Seamstress um, for her top tips on it because I want to make um, the one with the exposed ruffle, but I just couldn't get my head around the instructions. Um, so that's going to be one of my next makes, as and when I can make again, um, I'll, I shall do that. Um, but for this one, I knew I wanted to make it full length. I wanted to make a huge sleeve statement. Um, um, yes, definitely going to keep me warm um, at, at this time of year for sure. Um, so I've got one last thing to show you. Um, actually, I, I won't put that one on, I don't think. Um, where did I put it? Um, let me just go and grab it. Hang on a sec. There, I'm such a dozy bird. I, I got it down from out, upstairs out of my wardrobe and I've left it in the other room so I couldn't see where it was. And this is the Heather dress. So this is the last thing I made last month. And the reason I'm not putting this on again today is because my latest video was all about this make. Uh, I absolutely adore it. I've just, I've worn it endlessly since I've made it. It's made in this beautiful, um, it's called Leaves French Terry from So So So. Um, and it is just the softest fabric. It's a perfect combination of um, comfort and style um, in, in winter. Um, just love it. It's got these huge, great big pockets um, the Heather dress have. Um, I would have made this entirely on my low overlocker if my overlocker was behaving, which it is not right now. Um, I think it senses that I'm moving its moving house um, and is concerned that I'm not bringing, taking it with me naturally I am um, but I need I think I need new blades um, I've been sewing for it's got to be six or seven years I think and I've used <laughs> used this old thing loads in that time and probably not looked after it I, I mean I don't even know why I'm using the word probably I know I haven't looked after it certainly never look, looked to change the blades or anything it gets a quick hoover every now and again it gets new needles when I remember but that's about it so it's not behaving at the moment but the the heather dress is just super snuggly um, and it's a sew over it Heather dress I should say sorry um, and ironically uh, Lisa was doing a sew along for this I think last week maybe the week before so um, yeah if you're looking for some inspiration do pop over and see the sew along but I absolutely love this um, and I'll put a link above here to the sew along um, sew along to, for, for my video for, um, for for more details on this but yeah this French terry is just lovely so French terry is not just for sweatshirts it's also for dresses as well so that's it from me today. Um, I am going to be videoing straight after this one a um, fabric haul. I might even keep my indigo on because I love it so much. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm going to be showing you the, 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 the fabrics I've got um, to take me through for the next few weeks and months. Um, but I hope to be moving house in the meantime, so that's my biggest make and challenge um, coming up. Uh, but it's been great to be with you here again today. 
Okay. Thank you very much for all your lovely comments. Please do leave me a comment. Don't be scared. I respond to every single message that I get. Um, I'm hugely grateful for the content that I have, the contact, sorry, that I have all around the world. And I love to hear from you. Um, I hope that we can all bump into each other at some stage. It's a shame this time of year, and I've been normally going to the Knitting and Stitching show. Um, I think it's now called Stitches. Um, I absolutely love going to that. Um, way back at the beginning of the year I really hoped to meet some of the new sewing friends I've made um, at an event like that but obviously that's not happening at the moment. Um, thank you very much for those of you who've bought me a coffee. Um, I do have a Ko-Fi or coffee account um, and all details are linked down below. It absolutely means the world to me that um, you're supporting me that way and I promise you every penny you pop into that goes straight back into this channel and helps me keep this channel ticking over. So if you'd like to support me in that way I would be really really grateful. Um, uh, but also by just by liking, by commenting and just being here, it makes my day. So thank you so much. So everyone, stay safe and well. And until next time, uh, take care. Bye bye.